Chapter 16, Responsibility Centers. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email address and our phone number. And we are now on Facebook and adding videos to that site. St. Louis Te Test Prep is our Facebook page. This discussion is about responsibility centers. And let's define that term first. Responsibility centers are subunits, segments of a business, pieces of a business, where managers are held accountable for specific financial results. And what we're going to see in a minute is, is that there are forms of reporting that we give to these managers. There are several types of, of responsibility centers. A cost center where the only um, activity going on are costs and expenses, not revenues. So let's say it's the uh, the call center where you get calls from customers about a uh, product that's under warranty. The only thing we can do and control in that area is control costs. We're not generating any revenue. Second one down, revenue. Revenue center. Maybe it's the uh, sales area of a computer company. So that the only thing the salespeople can do is grow revenue. They can't control cost of the product. We'll see that example in a minute. Profit center which is most common where there is some revenue and some cost. And then an investment center is the most complex because not only is it a profit center with revenue and cost, but it also is responsible for a rate of return on capital that's been invested. So if the investment center has a uh, piece of machinery that was an investment, there's a rate of return that's, me that's measured on that piece of machinery. So if you're one of these managers with a segment that you're responsible for, your first thought should be, what do I control? What I mean by that is, can I change the revenue and or cost in my responsibility center? For example, the one I just used, salespeople in the revenue center can sell more, increase revenue in sales, but they can't control the cost of the product. Now, why is all this important? Well, if you're a manager, you're saying to yourself, I'm, if I'm being held accountable, I want to maximize my control over the outcome. What I've done here is flipped over to Excel and have an example of allocating advertising costs. Remember at the top that we allocate indirect costs like advertising and we distribute or trace direct costs like direct material, direct labor. So denim for the blue jeans, labor costs to pay people to run the sewing machines. Those are traceable direct costs. We're talking about advertising in this next line here that is an indirect cost. And the reason it's indirect is that it can't be tied to specific product sales. So we have four areas of a company. Downtown Indigo, Hermosa, and the total three areas of a company. We measure each segment's revenue, each one's cost and we come up with a total profit. And then we look at the profit in terms of percentage of the whole profit for the business. And we decide that we're going to allocate $60,000 based on the profit of each center. So for example, in the downtown division, we're going to multiply 28.7% times $60,000. And that's the tool that we've used to allocate the advertising with theory being that um, if you got results from advertising and sold more stuff and got more profit you should be allocated the advertising expense. Jumping over to a more complex example this is a responsibility segment center with segments that we're going to talk about controllable costs going back to what we had on PowerPoint what do I control and how did I how did I perform based on what I control? So we'll talk about a plumbing company and these numbers are in thousands in my example. We have a metro, a suburb, and a rural division or segment that add up to the standard plumbing company totals. So we have revenue for all three. Then we have a variable cost. For example, salaries to the staff, people who are doing the plumbing would be a variable cost. And if we subtract revenue from variable costs, we get contribution margins. So for each segment, metro, suburb, rural, we have a segment contribution margin 
that adds up to a total. Remember in prior videos, revenue minus variable cost equals contribution margin. The next thing we, sub we subtract in the analysis of, the, of an income statement type analysis is a controllable fixed cost. We say controllable because this is a cost that a manager can make a decision on and control. So the example I use is, well, let's say that the manager gets to pick their insurance for the vehicles that are out there driving around fixing plumbing. So we have controllable fixed costs, and we come up with a profit margin that each manager, metro, suburb, and rural can control. And then we look at that profit margin as a percentage of the revenue at the top. Profit margin, less percentage of revenue. So then, so far we've just talked about what each manager of the segments controls. The next step is to subtract off things that they don't control. For example, let's say there's a lease that's negotiated by the home office for each building for metro, suburb, and rural. Those managers don't control the terms of the lease. They're negotiated by headquarters. So these three costs in red are fixed costs that the manager does not control. We subtract that line in red to come up with the segment profit margin, the profit margin for the segment. And then there's one last thing to subtract before taxes, and that is a common fixed cost. A fixed cost that all three segments share. And in this example, I've said, well, how about interest expense on overall company debt? So since that's a common cost, we're only subtracting it from the total column. We'll say that's $50, a common fixed cost, the interest on the debt. We come up with income before tax. We subtract the ta income tax expense, and we have net income for the total. So to review here, we have our contribution margin formula, revenue minus variable cost. We subtract off fixed costs that each manager controls, in this case, insurance on vehicles. We come up with a controllable profit margin. So this highlighted section is what each segment manager can control. Below it are things the manager can't control, like the lease on the branch building. And finally, we have common costs that are incurred by the company as a whole. And you'll notice that that is not allocated by segment. We just subtract it from the total column. Finally, we talk about cost allocation, which relates to the last spreadsheet. The process of assigning costs in a cost pool, for example, the cost to repair machinery in the Levi Jeans factory. That's a cost pool, and we have to assign that to a cost object, the thing that's a lot causing us to incur costs, which is we're manufacturing pairs of blue jeans. And the question is, well, what basis do we use for allocating these repair costs? We use an allocation base called or a level of activity. In, the, in my example here on this slide, it would be machine hours to use the machines. If we're using machines more often, we're going to have repair costs incurred. That is the end of cost accounting 16. We have a uh, three one-hour videos that we use on gotomeeting.com. You'll see a description in a YouTube video, our YouTube channel, Kim Boyd STL, all one word. For live one-on-one -on -one tutoring and small chat, live chat sessions, here's my website, our email address, and our phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.